OK, so even if you had no interference from the ground, there are yeah. now a lot of spacecraft up there. There's a lot. Uh, in 2021 alone, there was 1,800 satellites launched just in that year. And this number isn't slowing down. So all right, let's go back. We have our tracking station. We're communicating it to a satellite in space. Now, as we talked about before, we get some spreading of the beam, right? As this goes over a distance, our beam spreads out. Even if we build it as gigantic as we possibly can kilometers, it's still going to spread a little bit in space. There's no way of perfectly being point to point. So normally you would say, OK, well, does it really matter if it goes here or here? There's not a satellite next to it. But there probably is, these but days. There probably is nowadays. That's the problem. And in fact, we're starting to see, and this is a, an example of satellites that either can fly in formation. So satellites that will be flying constellations where you put one after another after another, or they're just naturally merge or migrate due to the Earth's atmosphere. They slowly sink due to some uh, atmospheric drag and they slowly change their orbit. Or sometimes they're purposely put there and change as well. And if you're sending your signal at your reserved radio frequency to your satellite in space, well, chances are that satellite's going to be communicating at the same frequency as well. So whether it's intentional or not intentional, you're going to be transmitting your data, your images, maybe your secrets via to your satellite and unknowingly to other satellites as well. OK, is this becoming a real problem? Well, surprisingly, it is. And now people are doing this accidentally. It's getting very crowded. And some people are doing this intentionally. There are a few satellites that have now been known where, in fact, satellites have been, for lack of a better word, birthed in space. You launch a satellite up and then in orbit. So here, a Russian satellite was launched in 2019. And then uh, about two weeks later, a second satellite popped out of that bigger one. Now, that's kind of technologically a big marvel, but the problem is now this satellite can more easily migrate to a new point in space and go near, say, your neighboring satellite or your uh, other country's satellite. And in fact, what it was also realized is a third satellite in July popped out further away. So now you can intentionally put satellites in space, let them slowly navigate and migrate to say, oh, we really want to go listen to what that satellite's doing and go park next to it. Now, again, sometimes this may be for completely unintentional reasons, but as the technology becomes easier, and as you know you're going to be sending lots and lots of data and lots and lots of signals, you know there's going to be lots and lots of transmissions you can listen to. Now, of course, you could do clever things like, I mean, let's say your beam's going to hit five satellites. Um, if the five satellite providers are all collaborating, yep. then you could agree that um, if it's pre like, like an internet. Yes, I that's mean, right. If it's an internet signal, every signal that's sent down the internet has a little thing saying, I'm going to this IP address, everyone else ignore me, please. Yep. Um, and so you could do the same thing saying, okay, now we're talking satellite one, okay, we finished with you now, satellite two, and so on. That's right. The drawback of that is it means you're only transmitting one fifth as much data to each of them. Exactly. So you have to take time to send one and tell everyone else to ignore it. Uh, if it's a military purpose, of course, you can, I'm sure, do encrypt everything. That's right. Um, but that, of course, I mean, that's fairly routine nowadays to encrypt these things. Yep. So you can do these things, but there's always a cost. That's right. You're always going to have to um, spread your signal between more satellites. You're going to have to do one at a time. It's like you, your home internet when you've got everyone in the family <laughs> trying to <laughs> just stream Netflix at the same time. Uh, the rate at which anyone can do it is going to be less. Exactly. And if it's time critical things because it's defense or maybe there's a disaster, maybe there's an emergency situation, you're desperately trying to get information or images down to help you, as we'll see how we use in observations, well, that actually becomes a big bottleneck because now you're not only are you receiving and detecting a very small signal anyways because of the beam and the power, you're then quartering or having or sometimes 150th thing the signal already, which means you're slowing down that download, you're slowing down that rate, and you're reducing that signal. So it's going to just get harder from here. Right? It is going to get harder from here. So what we now need to find is potentially other ways that, say, can have benefits that get around some of these issues in radio waves. And this is what we're going to go start looking at.